Okay. Everyone, we are moving on to the second part of yesterday's lesson. Sorry for that. You don't need that right now. Uh, so we're going to be looking at yesterday's stuff. You are probably looking for yesterday's stuff. Um, let's do it. So just to help people who were away, particularly Sid, um, essentially what's happening is anytime you're looking for a variable, we're trying to solve for an equation, you will unfortunately have to do what we call the inverse of whatever operation you've got. So if the equation shows that it's, let's say, addition, you've got to do a subtraction. If it's a multiplication, you got to do a division and vice versa. But what happens when you have two different choices? Now, I'm going to approach these questions as if you've never done them before. So hope you follow along. And, uh, I might go a little fast, so feel free to stop me. Here we go. Here we go. I have with me a multiplication. Sorry, I'm going to step back. As always, the goal is to get x all alone. At the end of the question, x should equal some number. That's the goal. So when we go all the way back to the beginning of the question, I see that my x is on the left side of my equal sign. So I'm going to pick on you. So far, so good. You see that the x is on the left side of the equal sign. That's OK. I hope this works. So, Sid, I'm going to actually pick on you just to see if you're following, and please feel free to be wrong and to ask questions. Okay? This is the last piece of paper, so the third, third page. Okay? The goal is to get X all alone. So you identify that the X is on the left side. There are two things that's happening to the X. Right now, the X is being multiplied with a two, and the X is being subtracted with a three. So you have to do the opposite. In other words, you are either going to have to do a division with the two or an addition with the three. But the question is, which one do you do first? Someone else want to help out? Do you have an idea or is that just a hand? Yeah, Andy? It is the addition. How did you know that? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, so did you read that and you figured it out? Okay. So if you want to be, if you want to be super by the book and following rules, the rule is you do algebra by doing bed mass in reverse order. So, yeah, so we're going to do it, right? So here, performing bed mass first, before you do multiplication or division as the inverse, you must do addition subtraction. So take a look at this question again. I have multiplication here and a subtraction here. The first one you get rid of is the subtraction. So because of subtraction and addition come first, I am going to add both sides by three, effectively giving me 2x equals 1 plus 3, which I'm not going to insult your intelligence, is a 4. If you can figure that out, does that look familiar to you? It's exactly like yesterday. If you can solve the first one, if you know which one to do first, then the second step is easy right now x is being multiplied by two so now we must do the inverse divide both sides by two these divide into a one leaving the x four divided by two two done as it becomes more and more complex you will see there's another way that i like to do it but i don't expect everyone to think the way i do okay so let's let's go through it one more time number two Right now, I need to identify the variable. My variable is, uh, let's do that again, right there. Step two, I notice that there is currently a division of eight and a subtraction of three happening. 
Which one do I get rid of first? Yeah. Yeah, there you go, right? So addition, subtraction have to be resolved first. So I'm going to get rid of a subtraction of three by adding three, adding three, leaving me with a over a equals 10. And then suddenly it looks familiar. And this is why you had to do homework. Because as soon as you do that extra step, all of the other stuff should be, you should be confident in doing it. I see a divided by eight. I'm going to multiply both sides by eight. So division of eight, multiplication of eight will reduce to one, leaving me with one a. 10 times eight, 80. And you no longer have to do guesswork. You no longer have to try random numbers to see if it fits. You can get to the final answer right away. Yes, question. Um, why do you divide two over or two x over two a? Ah, before taking one step at a time, this was my line right here. If I added three to both sides, it becomes like this. Yeah. Now I want x all alone. What's happening to the x? It's multiplying with the two. It's two times x or x times two. So I divide both sides. And so then you multiply a over a because it's divided. Correct. Already. Yes. Um. So how? Do you Wait, how does the eight turn into one? Good question. Okay, so let's simplify this portion. The question was, how the heck does that simply turn into A? Okay. This is where we go back to our fractions. If you multiply this as a fraction, what do you get? Multiply across, multiply across. You get it, right? Yeah. And suddenly, anything, yeah. So it, it just it all simplifies into a one. And so I did that there. Yes, my Ah, good question. You can do either one. Yeah, just like bed mats, right? Just left to right. Um, I'm going to do one more before I show people how my brain works. And if you like it, take it. If not, pretend I never talked. Okay. Last one. 4K, so 4 times K plus a 3. Which one do you do first? Stephanie, you with me? Which one do you do first? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you identify the addition of three and the multiplication of four, doing the opposite of bed mass to simplify or to, sorry, isolate, subtract both sides by three leaving me with just 4k and the right side is just 16. Divide both sides by four. The final answer is k equals four. And again, the beauty of this is you don't have to guess numbers anymore. And that was the whole goal. I really hope you'll, you'll take to this and you won't ever have to guess. So either 4k or 4k is From here to here? Okay, so this was from previous lesson. At this point, you should recognize that four is multiplying with K. What's the opposite of multiplication? How do I get K all alone? So I divide both sides by four. So four divided by four turns into a one. And 16 divided by four is four. Okay, so this is from, this from here to here is gonna be yes here. One step. So now you see why we call this two steps. Here's what I do. Now, if you're watching this through video, you won't really be able to see me until I turn on the video. Okay. What I'm trying to do is that when I was younger, um, my sister did a lot to teach me when I was, uh, when I was very, very young. Um, she essentially raised me in that sense. But what my sister told me was, take your finger, literally, and cover the term that has the variable. So I'm gonna take my finger, Cover the terms that has a variable. I need to get that all alone. Let's get rid of everything around that, that my finger hasn't covered. So the plus four, I'm going to minus plus three, I'm going to minus three. And then I get 4k. All right. Now that there's nothing around the term, 
take your finger and cover the variable itself. How do you get rid of that? Division of four. Right? So to me, I actually, it, my brain has been trained to sort of work outside in. Between this and this, which one is further away from the K? The three is. And then now that that's done, how to get rid of the four, and so on and so forth. So that's how my brain has worked. If you don't like that, just stick to the bed mass thing. Let's try some practice questions. Okay. Clearing the video and clearing. Uh, okay, well, that's that's homework. How about this? I do want to give everyone a chance to try it. So number four to nine. Honestly, honestly, if you've been keeping up with homework, each of these questions, I think, shouldn't take you more than a minute or two. So I'm going to give you until 1245. Could you try these six questions? Do as many as you can. Be wrong. I don't care. Go through the motions, and we'll take it up together at 1245. Yes. Absolutely. I'm going to stop this video here. It's going to be loud. All right, here we go. So for number four, five, six, all the way to nine, I'm not going to do all of them, but you'll get the point. Uh, I'll do all of the steps for the first one, and all the other ones, I'll show you what I would be looking for in the least. I see two sides, a multiplication of three and an addition of two. I'm going to get rid of the addition first. That means 3x is equal to 15. Next, one step left, divide both sides by three. That's it. That's all I'm looking for. Number six, six X minus 10 equals a two. Now this, if you want to rearrange it because you want the X value on the left side of the equal sign, you could, it doesn't matter. Let's, play, let's pretend that you did not get to that point. Someone joined us online. Nice. We have uh, addition of 10, addition of 10, leaving me with 12 equals six X. And then divide both sides by six, I get x equals 10. Let's do the final one. So this is a question that I think uh, Michael was asking. Hey, what if you have a multiplication and a division at the same time? What do you do? Do whatever is easier. I think you would agree that you'd rather not deal with fractions. And so let's get rid of a division of seven. How do you get rid of a division of seven? Multiply by seven. So the division of seven and multiplication of seven will reduce into one, leaving me with two X on the left side and negative 28 on the right side. And lastly, divide both sides by two, you get negative 14. In a simple way, you can, you can say that algebra or solving for X is like, working backwards before you were doing guess and check right? when you were younger. Now you're working backwards and reverse engineering. This is the most basic form of what you would call reverse engineering. Do you know what I mean by that? Reverse engineering? No. Have you ever heard of situations like maybe you saw something on a video where a kid sort of, you know, dismantles a radio or dismantles like a phone and like learns how to put it back together, right? That's reverse engineering, right? It's sort of like that. You're, you're going backwards to figure out what you started with. And that's it. That is multi-step. Any questions on that? But there's a lot of homework for this, yes? Um, you mentioned this earlier, but are we going to go over five? Number five? Sure, you can. Well, let's take a look. So we have a request for number five. I am going to, I notice the X's on this side. I also notice there's a multiplication and an addition. I'm going to work out the addition first. Minus five, minus five. The right side, I'm left with four X. The left side, I'm left with 28. Oh, so it just does anything going to front? I thought it would go like we did it last year and it would become like a negative number. What? And it would then you'd have to like change it to a positive number. That would be incorrect. Okay. Maybe, maybe like this, like negative five plus thirty-three. Is that what they did? Maybe something like that, but it was weird. Uh, it was hard to follow. 
that makes me a little sad. No, it's um, just 33 minus 5 as is. 28 on one side and 40 on the other. We were taught to like change the whole equation so it would like be flipped over. So for me, uh, on the other side, more of the side would be on the other side. Oh, I, oh well, sure. I, I just mentioned that. Okay. Where, um, you know, left side equals right side. Left side equals right side. Yeah. Well, then right side does equal left side. You can write it whatever way you want. Some people really do prefer the X on the left side, and that's the right. So you can do that. Correct. And then I, I still subtract both sides by 5, though, leaving me 4X equals 28, and then X equals 7. Either way is OK. All right. Anyways, that is solving simple one-step, two-step equations. For a little bit of today's lesson, I'm going to stop the video or I'll let it run. We are going to go into section 3.6. And that is taking a look at multi-step. So if you remember my little post in the beginning of class uh, in my whiteboard, I wrote the goal was to be able to do multi-step equations so that we can group or we can put all the stuff we've learned so far together. Grouping like terms, what we did on the quiz. Uh, expanding distributive property, what we did on the quiz. And then solving for the x value, what we did yesterday. We're going to try to bring all that together, take some time to work through it. So here are some challenging questions. Of course, we will not finish this today. We'll probably go more into it tomorrow. But this is the beginning of part two. One, two, three. Go. Take it from this row, okay? Uh, there should be a copy for it. Just put it off on the side, then, then pass it down. There we go. No problem. Okay, how far would I be? Okay. Hey, everyone. Leon, you good? There are two things. Oh, extra. Thank you. There are two things I would like you to consider today. Number one, there will be situations where you have to group like terms first because yo, there's two x's right now. How are you going to solve for two of them? That's more work than is necessary. Let's move on. What happens if the x value is part of brackets? You're going to have to try distributive property. And of course, at the end of the day, there will be a situation where you have to do both grouping like terms and distributive property. That's the final goal, okay? So here we go. Let's start looking at what to do for, oh, what to do when you have to group first, okay? To solve these kinds of equations when variables are all over the place, first, collect the variable terms on one side and see if you can uh, group like terms. And then we're going to isolate. And you'll see that it's the same stuff, except there's one more step than before. So step one, please bring all the variables to one side and all the constant terms without a variable on the other. So consider this. I see an x squared, uh, x, uh, 6x. I see a positive 2x. They're both on one side. Great. I see a constant term 3 plus. I see a constant term 19. They are not in the same side. Bring that 3 to the other side. How do I get rid of this positive 3? 
get rid of it. I don't want that three there. So how do you get rid of it, Michael? Yeah, let's turn it into a zero. But if you do it to one side, you gotta do it to the other. So I'm left with six X, two X, three minus three, that's nothing. 19 minus three is 16. Stop right there. Any questions? Because that's a new step. That's something we haven't done before. Leave all the variables on one side, bring everything else to the other side. Wait, it says what's two x equals 16. Correct. Again, I have made the positive three nothing by subtracting a three. And you got to do the same thing on the other side because, you know, equal sign. Oh, oh, no. Oh, okay. I completely forgot what we were doing. And I thought we were actually like combining those terms. And we're going to say like, well, 16x. We're there. We are combining 6x, 2x. I'm not going to solve for x individually. That's extra work. Instead, I'm going to group them. And But if you do that, does that look familiar? That was from yesterday. So it's a multiplication. So divide both sides by x, you get two. So there's no guesswork. I'm gonna check, everyone. This is, this is where we wanted to get. If x is a two, what's, a, what's six times two? 12. 12. Plus three, plus, what's two times two? Four. Does that equal a 19? Yes, so I got it right. So you can check. But this is the thing, if we didn't do this algebra, we would have done guess and check forever, right? We would have tried numbers and tried numbers and tried numbers. We are trying to remove that guessing from mathematics completely. We're trying to come down to the actual true answer in one shot by reverse engineering. So here we go. Uh, same thing here. I have Y values on one side. Yay, these Y terms, I like them here. That's fine, which means I need to get all the other terms to the other side. Okay. If you're giving some kind of hand signal, that was funny. So we've got plus two. Let's get rid of plus two. Okay, and so I'm gonna do it one step at a time, okay? The left side is negative two. I have y, nine y, minus y, minus 13. Let's get rid of negative 13 or minus 13. Plus. Plus 13, plus 13, because you have to be on both sides of the equal sign. Now I have ooh, 11, nine y, minus y. Let me see if I could put a, some color there to show you that these are zero pairs, okay? And then I'm going to group like terms, which is 11 equals eight y. Ooh, that's not a very happy number. That's okay. Divide both sides by eight. There it is. So if you want to be really neat about it, you put the variable first and you say, hey, y equals therefore y equals 11 over eight. I, I did divide it. I divided both sides by eight. Okay. Oh, as a decimal, yeah. super messy. It will become something like 1.375, I think, but- Do you just leave it as a fraction? Yes. What if that wasn't a nice fraction? Just in case, it's actually, mathematicians really like fractions instead. Like it's so much neater than writing decimals. If it was like, um, you save it after like two, mm -hmm. would you write two or would you write 11 away? Well, well, yeah, if, if it's like 16 over 8, then you can do that and it becomes a 2. But if it's going to be a decimal, just leave it as a fraction, yeah. Particularly math teachers in Northern, they, they really they really would like that. Yes, Andrew? Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially two over three, because two over three is zero point say 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 and just just really messy. Two over three is so nice. Okay. So thank you. Um, we'll try one more. This time, I'm gonna not show all the work, but only do the work in my head. Ooh, I see three W on one side. And I see two W on the other side. So I got to get rid of one of them. Do you want to get rid of three W or do you want to get rid of two W? Because I can't have both. Chew it. Go for it. Seven. Huh? They are, but I need to have them both on the same side. So the logic is, let's say, I don't like that. I don't want it on the right side. How do you get rid of a two W? I am going to subtract both sides by two W. Of course, two W is a term. It's still a number. So you could do whatever you want with it. Same thing. Same thing. Correct. Well, you wouldn't, you pro I probably wouldn't give you questions like that. Would that if it's like that, if it's like three W plus four equals two A plus six, you won't be able to solve it. At least not on its own. That's more of a grade 10 level thing. And you will see some tips and tricks afterwards. Right now, so the left side becomes three W minus two W. And uh, that equals six minus four. I wonder if people can see what I did in my head. If you see it, just like nod your head or tap your head or sing a song or something. Do you see where the, what, what I did to get the W all in one spot and everything else on the other side of the equal sign? I didn't like this plus four. So I subtracted both sides by four. That's what I did. Yep. That's it. No guesswork. If you really wanted to check, let's plug in a two. What's three times two? Six plus four equals what's two times two? Four plus six. Do they equal? Absolutely. It works. No guesswork involved. Okay. Um, Literally, this entire sheet is half of that is already done. Okay. So I'm going to see if you can try that on your own using the example that we have here. I'm going to move on to what you would do if you have distributive property. Hint, it's the same stuff. If you are given a equation, but that involves a bracket, let's multiply it out and get rid of it. To solve an equation with brackets, use distributive property to expand, and then do everything we've learned so far by grouping like terms and isolating. So let's make life easy for ourselves. I hope you recognize this from our quiz. 5D is equal to 4D plus 8. Next. I have D on the left side, D on the right side. Andy? Pardon? Wouldn't brackets be? I'm oh, sorry, I can't quite hear, sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. Uh, what I decided to do first was actually just multiply everything out and get rid of the bracket. What you could do, absolutely. I think what you're trying to do is you're, did you try to divide by four first? Because there's a bracket and there's a multiplication, you wanted to get rid of a multiplication first. No? Okay. That, you know what? You could do that, but it will make this a decimal. It's going to be a little messy. So I think until that we were forced in that situation, I think it might be better to do expanding, multiply it up. And now, 
Um, yeah, let's get rid of 4D from one side, which means I get rid of 4D from the other side. This leaves me with, I'll write it out, 5D minus 4D is equal to 8. 5 minus 4, D equals 8. Hey, I don't have to do anything else. I'm, I'm, it already solved itself. Shall we try the next one then? It's harder. If it helps to clarify, it's never bad. Okay, last question before I sort of uh, set you free for today to try to practice. The fact that we're finishing the second one, I'm actually sort of impressed. We'll see. We'll see. Two a minus eight plus three a plus six equals seventeen. Solve. So this would be a quiz question. Solve for a. What do you do? What's the goal? You could try the isolation and do the inverse operations. Let's make life easy for ourselves. Let's get rid of the part. Let's do distributive property. Watch it with me. You can say no. It's okay. <laughs> you sound unsure. Let's walk it through. Would you do distributive property, the thing we did in the quiz? Can you multiply this out for me? What do I get? Uh huh. Negative 60. Good. And then? Good. And then? Good. Equals 17. Okay. Next, I want all the variables on one side, which I do already. I don't want the negative 16 plus 18 equals uh, uh, on the left side. I want it both on the right side. Okay. Question? Okay. Anyone else? Last question here, so bear with me. 2A, 3A, I might as well put it together. This is 5A. Negative 16 plus 18, I might as well put it together. And all of a sudden, it should be a little easier. Hey, do some people recognize that? Wasn't that one of our questions from the previous? I feel like there was an X there. Anyways, I want 5A all alone. Let's get rid of the positive 2 by subtracting both sides by 2. 5A equals 15. And then divide both sides by 5a equals 3. No guesswork. No guesswork. You don't have to try every single number. You can reverse engineer it and find where, where the number is. Yeah. 5a what? Did you get 5a from 5a? Yes. So I got here. Let me see if I could color code it. Wait, why are you subtracting? Oh, 2 is like a specific number. Where did you go? Red. Where did the two come from? The two? The positive. Uh, positive two came from negative 16 with 18. I grouped like terms. Oh, 16 minus 18 minus 16. Yeah. Why did that? Next one with the same. Because I, I added 16 to the other side and minus 18 from the other side. Mine, you sub what? I subtracted 18 from the other oh, side. Oh, yeah, you can. Added, yeah, you know, you can. Um, no, try to get 20. I have to subtract 18 from both sides, right? And then to get rid of negative 16, you also have to add 16 to both sides. So it, 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 it will all get to the same point. Just keep practicing. All right, everyone, here's my, uh, I'm going to say, here's my expectations for today. I would like you to try all the examples we haven't done so yet in class. And uh, we are gonna still spend a little bit of time tomorrow on this. So if you can do numbers one and two, that would be amazing. If you wanna go the extra mile and try numbers, I don't know why there's no three, try numbers four and five, that's okay too. But I would like to see 
some effort done, please finish off the examples from the previous pages and number two from this sheet. We still have 30 minutes for 25. Okay, I'm gonna stop the video here. Any questions?